My beloved brethren, what a glorious occasion it is to make the personal acquaintance in my new calling of so many worthy chosen sons of our Heavenly Father to assist in building his kingdom. Of whom I know for sure that Jesus said, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And of whom the prophet Joseph Smith said, Ye are they whom my Father hath given me, ye are my friends. Because there is no doubt in my mind that the Lord has brought us together here with a purpose, since it was revealed through the prophet Joseph Smith, and he that is faithful shall be made strong in every place, and I, the Lord, will go with you. And we have come here from all corners of the world. And I myself, from a small town in Holland where only a handful of members of the church reside. And therefore I'm sure that many of you could tell an interesting story about his conversion and baptism into the church, about the first contact with the missionaries, about the three stages we all have to go through when entering the kingdom here on earth. The entry stage, the development stage, and the st stewardship stage as part of man's eternal progression from the pre-existence and including the life hereafter. Purpose of my being here tonight is sharing my testimony with you and subsequently sharing my happiness with you. Because since the first day the missionaries knocked on my door in Holland, since the baptism of Sister De Jager and myself in Toronto, Canada, where we then resided, since I had the great privilege of baptizing by the power of the Holy Melchizedek Priesthood, my own son and daughter, since our marriage for time and eternity in the Swiss temple and having our children sealed to us, our joy and happiness in the kingdom has grown and grown and grown. And now, as a crown on the work, so to speak, our son Michael is serving a full-time mission on the island of Java in Indonesia to teach per personally in his turn to those wonderful people over there what we as parents and so many faithful, dedicated teachers in the church have taught him with love and patience about the plan of salvation in all its details. When he left Holland to go to Java, the island where he was born, we had done what was in our power to prepare him for the sacred calling of being a missionary, as the Lord had commanded. For it is written in Doctrine and Covenants, section 68, and they, the parents, shall also teach their children to pray and to walk uprightly before the Lord. How grateful and delighted we were when we heard that by inspiration he was called to serve at a place completely in accordance with the revelation given through the prophet Joseph Smith, sent forth the elders of my church into the nations which are afar off, unto the islands of the sea, send them forth unto foreign lands. I testify to you in all humbleness, to all of you assembled here, and in all humility, but with great joy, that the mission of our son, 10,000 miles away from home, has brought him closer to us than ever before. That we at home share in the blessings he received from the Lord for his faithfulness and diligence in the work, and that we are a happier family because of it. May I therefore remind and encourage all fathers to prepare their children to fulfill the mission as a prophet of God has commanded. Fathers know, and whoso is found a faithful, a just, and a wise steward shall enter into the joy of his Lord and shall inherit eternal life. The part of this promise shall enter into the joy of his Lord is even given to us for this life while we are here on earth. And if we are faithful, 
and just and a wise steward. Now we shall enter into the joy of our Lord and Savior now and prepare ourselves for eternal life. Now, brethren, we determine where we will be when we leave this mortal life, because when the hour of redemption has come, the hour of preparation has passed. I testify to you as a happy Dutchman who found the gospel of Jesus Christ as a liahona in his life, that by living the commandments, the joy is ours today, tomorrow, and in all eternity. And wherever you have come from, shout it from the rooftops. The kingdom of God has been restored to the earth by the prophet Joseph Smith. And if you suffer from acrophobia, that is fear of heights, don't climb the roof, but simply stay on the ground and give your friends and neighbors the same message. The kingdom of God has been restored to the earth by the prophet Joseph Smith. Talking about the Liahona I have found in my life, you can read concerning the ways of the Lord in this dispensation in the church magazines, and your families and our families will be better families because of it. These are the blessings of faithful Latter-day Saints all over the world, bringing great joy and happiness in their lives. You, who are Americans assembled here, have an expression which I have learned, and it says, life is not all peaches and cream. Although in the season we have plenty of peaches in Holland and cream enough all year long, but we are happy with the sure knowledge that the Lord has placed us on this earth, earth as part of his great plan of salvation. That is, brethren, what brings the happiness to us. In closing, I bear you my testimony that these brethren with whom I am privileged to share the stand today are men of God, that President Spencer W. Kimball is indeed a prophet of the living God to guide us in these, the latter days. I testify that these brethren who are members of the Council of the Twelve are indeed called to be special witnesses of the name of Christ in all the world, like the members of the First Council of Seventy have been called to preach the gospel in all the world. I love and admire them for the example they set, their friendship and the way they teach us by the Spirit all the things we need to return to our Heavenly Father. This conference will touch our hearts and change our lives, and I bear witness to you that your life will not be the same when you return to your respective wards and branches. We will return edified, wiser, more sensible to the need of others, and better equipped with the knowledge we need in our homes, and therefore will be happier and closer to our Heavenly Father. May peace and happiness be with you this day and always, I humbly pray in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.